Allbirds, the <laughs> online shoe brand gaining momentum for making what it calls the world's most comfortable shoes, has just opened a 4,800 square foot flagship store in New York City. The company also just made LinkedIn's 2018 top startup list. Allbirds plans to open eight more stores in the U.S. over the next year. So as retailers like Sears and J. Crew have scaled back on brick and mortar, why is the startup betting on physical stores? Kind of a trend we've been seeing with some digital startups. Allbirds co-CEO is with us, Joey Zwillinger. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me on. So we really have seen this with Casper and Warby Parker. They start online and now you, and now they go into brick and mortar. So where, so where does the actual physical store fit in with your vision on selling to consumers these days? Yeah, you know, I think it's specific to every company and, and each market. We're a, we're a material science company and a material innovator more than anything. We happen to make shoes, uh, but we, we do a lot of deep research on materials like merino wool, uh, we use material from eucalyptus fiber. We've done stuff with sugar cane to make new polymers. And all of these are so tactile. And when we're selling something, a shoe, a shoe that's comfortable, I think touching and feeling that is incredibly important to add to the experience. So this is a, a central part of what we're doing. And, and brick so and mortar is, is important. Does Wilford need sneakers made out of eucalyptus tree fiber or merino will? Yeah, I'd, I'd contend that he needs both. <laughs> I don't know him well, well but, but I, think he needs, I think he needs both. But, but I mean, I'm interested, you talk about the technology behind this. Why only shoes still? Is that a thought process? Are you going to use the, the, the innovation you found to, to, to roll out? Yeah, it's a great question, and, and, and uh, we absolutely do. I mean, this is, this is not just about shoes. Uh, it just takes a long time. I mean, we've been working on the sugarcane product for three years. The, the tree product took us two years. Uh, wool took us a year. So it, it's, 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 it's a labor of love and getting this into a, a new category is a real challenge. So when it's right, we're absolutely going to do it. And I think there's some big problems to solve that we can, we can be a great company to do it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of an old guy. You came here and asked if you know, we have a pair of these. What fascinates me is everything you're saying fits into this mode of younger people want to know the story behind the product. It's got to just, I think you need to know the whole heritage of it. What problem are you solving? Well, they also uh, want what's environmentally friendly. Right? right, as opposed to just being, oh, this is a fashionable shoe. I like how it feels. I'm going to wear it. Yeah, I mean, the provenance of materials and products is increasingly important. Absolutely. And information's so efficient now that if you do something and, and, and it doesn't support the mission that you're, you're behind, people will find out and they will punish you for it. And so we absolutely stand up to the promise of making what we think are the most sustainable shoes in the world. We also try to do that as, as a really important benefit, but it enables the most comfortable shoes in the world. And that's actually what we're trying to do. And, and while it's, it speaks to millennials, it is really, it is really transcends age. We have people of all ages, of all demos, attracted to our shoe. And I think that's why we're actually, we're, we're about to eclipse a million customers this week. And so we're doing a cool celebration for, for the fact that after only two and a half years, we're, we're crossing a million customers and we're doing something with the Audubon Society to, to celebrate that. We, we often talk, and Sarah particularly likes to talk about the power of celebrity influencers. You don't necessarily have a full celebrity influencer kind of campaign, but Leonardo DiCaprio invested, yeah. tweeted about your business. Did you see an immediate tick up in, in sales when that happened? Or is it more of the fact that he's there for the long term? Yeah, it's, it's, he's long term. I mean. Uh, Leonardo has been fantastic. That was a really organic relationship where he loves the product and then it, it realized that his whole advocacy for the environment and, and global warming and climate change is exactly our company's mission, is to do things, make better shoes and better things in a better way. And so when he found that out, it kind of came together and really gelled. And it was just such a nice, authentic tie that we expect to do a lot with Leo in the future. It's interesting because I wouldn't have thought of shoes as being something that was so uh, kind of disruptive environmentally. Two and a half billion pairs of shoes in the U.S. every year, bought and sold. 20 billion globally. They end up in landfills, and they're one of the least thoughtful from an environmental perspective of any consumer product. And so that dearth of leadership was where we wanted no, to really no, step no, in. No, no.